Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Carmen Bryant and I'm your host and this is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Thank you guys for joining me on Sunday. Uh, once again to all the mothers and those that have to stand in the place of absent mothers, that including fathers, that have stood in the place of absentee mothers, those that are aunties, friends, and had to raise someone else's children and fathers that are protecting their children uh, from narcissistic um, women uh, or uh, family members you know thank you guys so much and and happy mother's day to each one of you hopefully you got my special message in the beginning of that uh live on sunday to all the new viewers thank you so much for being here thank you for finding something that i have to say relevant to your situation whether it is leaving recognizing that you are in or even recognizing stuff about yourself uh, you know we can we can pretend that we don't know we don't understand but a narcissist um plays on our innocent ignorance sometimes you know what you decide not to address or try to ignore is the very thing that narcissists will use against you you know these people are very um devious dark and uh, empty individuals and they are after fuel and so this video I wanted to take an opportunity uh, and before I start if you have not already uh, my book has come out you can find it on amazon.com you can also find it on Barnes and Noble those of you that are out of country I don't know if Barnes and Noble but another one is um, uh, what is West Bow Press West W-E-S-T, Bow, B-O-W, Press, P-R-E-S-S dot com. Uh, and you can order my book. It is Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection. And the book, some of you have ordered it. So hopefully you guys give me some feedback. None of you guys have said anything yet. So I don't know if you guys have finished reading it. Um, but, um, you know, give me some feedback. Tell me what you're thinking. Did you find yourself in the book? Did you recognize yourself? This particular book, when I wrote it, I wrote it because we can talk about narcissist abuse all day long. You know, and, and you're reading the comments. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you education. But to actually see it play out for you guys that are reading the book, you can actually see narcissist abuse play out. And some of the ways that it plays out, most people, they're hidden in plain sight. Most people don't know, you know, that the esteem are the ones that abuse and uh, but their personality, their charisma. You know, they're, you know, that they're givers, you know, they hide in plain sight. Most people don't even recognize. And most women um, or men, men too, men get abused. So all the kings that have joined me, thank you so, so much. And do know, um, and this is from the bottom of our heart, from this tribe, from this support group, you will be honored and respected here. This is not a site where we bash the kings, we lift the kings up, and we also make you uh, feel honored and respected here on this YouTube channel because the kings are very relevant. You are are very needed and you are very relevant we honor you we love you and we respect you kings and so this is not just for the women this is for you as well and thank you so many of you have been sharing with me so let's go on to the topic uh, some of you guys say I'm long-winded I sure am I sure am uh, so let's talk about fuel and I know I did another video where I talked about fuel but some of you guys are sending me email messages and I just wanted to go back and recap and just revisit this topic <clears throat> A lot of you are surprised at the fact that, uh, you know, first of all, to come to terms with the individual, I mean, come to terms with the fact that the individual that you've gotten into a relationship with actually does not have the capacity to um, feel empathy, to feel compassion, to bond. Um, some of you have discovered that you are empaths. Some of you have discovered that you are super empaths. And just to go back and, and redefine the super empath, some of you guys are looking at the super empath like Foxy Brown back in the 70s you know and you waving your afro around and pumping your fist in the air there are some of you that actually came in and made the comments about the super empath and some of you guys were pinpoint accurate that let me know that you are a super empath a super empath and remember i am a clinical uh therapist i am a clinical therapist i i hold a doctor's degree so some of you guys have asked i do hold a doctor's degree a doctor of education the equivalent uh well not the equivalent but my um degree is focused on research and uh, education uh, and I have a doctor of education in counseling psychology with an emphasis in um, counselor education and supervision I am a clinical supervisor in the state of Washington I'm also a licensed mental health counselor and so some of you guys have asked me that question I just wanted to give you that answer but as a clinician sitting in here and dealing with trauma I am a, uh, a certified a clinical a certified clinical trauma professional um, and uh, with that 
in mind, I see, I deal with trauma clients all day long, every day, all day, all day. There is a difference between the empath and the super empath. Um, and those people that are super empaths, when you say you're an empath or you're a super empath, when you say super empath, and you realize that you have went supernova, uh, super, super empaths don't go supernova all the time. That's completely draining. That is exhausting. You guys feel bad after you've done it. You know, you question yourself all the time, but a super empath, um, you know, when you come in and I recognize you as being that individual, a super empath, that lets me know that majority of the people that are in my um, practice that are super empaths are severely wounded. They're very emotionally unstable. They question everything. You know, they're very hurt people. A, a majority of all of them deal with post-traumatic stress, complex post-traumatic stress, and borderline personality, not all at the same time, but and borderline personality disorder. Very traumatized individual. A lot of them are on medications, on lots of medications. I do a lot of mental health assessments for them to help stabilize them. A lot of them do become suicidal. And so these individuals require a lot of energy to work with and build with. And some of them, it took a year or two to get to a certain level where um, where they are, are, are stable enough, but they still, you know, they're still susceptible, you know. Um, and so when you say super empath, that's, you know, that, <laughs> For most people, that's very empowering. Uh, but for most people, and a lot of you have commented, that is not an empowering statement uh, to be a super empath. So you got to be careful how you use that. Um, and those of you that decide that I am too harsh when I speak, you know, this may not be the channel for you. I'm going to keep it real. You have lived in a relationship with a narcissist, male or female, who has lied to you, who has manipulated you, who has um, stroked your um, emotions, stroked your ego, and and has man I'm gonna come straight for it and I'm gonna tell you like it is because I want to see you healed so I'm not one that's gonna be pulled into emotions and neither should you guys don't let people pull you into their emotions to try to get you to change the way that you are that is called manipulation even wounded people people that are very wounded people that are very hurting will manipulate you to transform or to cater to their emotions. We're not here to cater to emotions. We're here to build, build you back up and get you because you are survivors. And believe it or not, those of you that think you're weak, you're actually very powerful. And I want to build on your power. And I want to talk about fuel. That's what brings me to fuel. Um, um, the thing about fuel is this. Uh, we through you know throughout our life you know we you know if you study human beings we we need to be you know children need to be touched they need to be held um, they need to feel connected um, you know people need to get a compliment every now and then but it doesn't make you live your whole life you know girl you know your hair looking good thanks girl you know you feel good for the rest of the day you know um, you know or or somebody gives you a compliment thank you or just just says thank you you know thank you you know I really appreciate you doing that for me they feel good they'll probably come back and do it again you like you know she's very appreciative he's very appreciative you know and so but we don't live off of that to survive a narcissist lives off of fuel that's why, uh, like H.G. Tudor, he calls them the appliances. Or, you know, we call them, or, or we read their sources of supply. A car needs fuel to drive. So if your car does not have fuel, you will not be going nowhere because your car drives off of fuel. And if there's no fuel in your tank and that little light comes on and you run out of gas, your car is not going anywhere. Neither is the narcissist. If you build a fire, you need air and you need the uh, uh you need uh what's it called fuel meaning some wood you know something you know to keep it burning if you take the air out and you put like something on top of that that uh fire with no air the fire goes out you know if you take the wood out eventually you know the wood is going to lose you know if you wave it in the air and you cool it off you know you take the fuel out of the fire the fire dies the you know just like uh remember the titanic or the ships back in the 1800s they needed coal and that coal ignited the fire and made that fire hot to push those engine and push that those steam engines forward. You know, well, a narcissist is the exact same way. If you take away their fuel, they die. Now, they may not die a physical death unless they get to a point, you know, and that's why it's very imperative. You like with the aging narcissist, you know, they get worse and worse with time. They're honorary, they're angry, they're mean, and people don't want to have anything to do with them. So a lot of them end up being very lonely. 
in, in these, uh, you know, some of them are in the assisted living. They're lonely. They're angry. They're hateful individuals. People don't want to deal with them. You know, by law, you got to feed them and make sure they're taken care of, but you don't have to interact with them, right? And so what ends up happening is, you know, people die of loneliness. They'll commit suicide. You know, they can't get the few. They can't connect with people that they're trying to connect with. Kids don't want to have anything to do with them. So they become very depressed. They become very lonely. So those of you that are asking about the, you know, karma, what comes around, goes around, let them age. And the more they age, the more honored they are. Those that have not uh, um, elevated or have gone up in the scale of narcissism are still low to mid-grade. A lot of them are so mean and angry. Family members don't want to have anything to do with them. Kids don't want to have anything to do with them. No one wants to be bothered with them. And so a lot of times you see people within the assisted living that are lonely. Now, I'm not saying all of them are narcissists. No, not all of them are. But a lot of them, you know, a lot of those narcissists, when they don't have fuel, they die. So you have, and keep in mind that narcissists, most people are just looking, you know, a lot of you are looking at the narcissist as, as a normal person. First of all, they're not normal. And then also know just because they have a cluster B personality disorder in this situation, it is narcissism, you know, narcissistic personality disorder. They may also have borderline personality. They may also have, um, you know, they may have, uh, let's say they may have not out of the cluster B, they may have major depression. Most of them have been traumatized. Remember, they have been traumatized. Not all of them have been sexually assaulted, but um, they have been traumatized one way or another they may come from families of narcissists and if you have been and some of you have experienced being in a family with narcissistic parents or a narcissistic parent you're being traumatized on a daily basis it's almost living in pure horror hell trauma every day with a narcissistic parent that you can never ever please you never feel complete you never feel valued you know think about the teenagers and the children that are growing up with these parents that are even competing with them or competing for attention you know and they're so hateful you know or they look at the kids as sources of supply you know their only way that they can get attention is when they um when people pay attention to the kids you know that's an extension of them but they need that fuel and they compete with the kids to a point where they'll injure the kid you know, because they're getting too much attention. So this is fuel, you know, and so some of you have been traumatized and some people have, have, you know, with that type of trauma have developed narcissistic personality disorder because the mind shut down and cannot handle that trauma, that stress. And so when that switch went off, the compassion stopped, you know, the ability to bond to people, the empathy will shut off. It becomes scary because that's what they associate love and compassion with. So they shut it off. You know, that is scary and that is very dangerous. Dangerous, so they shut down so that they don't have to feel that you feel it they don't feel it they're not normal people so the way that you look at them you're looking at them from a compassionate human you know emotions they don't think the same way that you think they don't have compassion they're looking at you like they want that but they don't have that they can't get that they like that and they want some fuel from that but they can't get that but they survive off of fuel you know just like we have to eat to live not live to eat but we have to eat to live the body needs fuel the the narcissist needs fuel. Now, keep in mind, you're also dealing with people that, that have narcissistic personalities. Uh, and remember, in the old um, DSM, which is the Diagnostic the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders, Psychiatric Disorders, um, the book that used in the mental health field, you know, uh, before it used to be called uh, Mild, Moderate, and Severe Mental Retardation. Well, now it is called... Um, it's called uh, intellectual or uh, is intellectual or cognitive delay um, or, or yeah, intellectual cognitive delay, you know, and it could be at different levels of severity and a narcissist can have developmental and cognitive delays. They can have autism. Um, they can have brain injuries. Some of them do have traumatic brain injuries that will manifest itself and look like cognitive delays. Um, you have those that have post-traumatic stress and, and uh, bipolar disorder. So, you know, you got this one individual. Don't assume that they just have one disorder. A lot of them have other disorder. And some of you talked about the multiple personality, which is also called dissociative disorder. Now, think about it. Sometimes you can confuse the two because of the fact that when you're dealing with dissociative disorder each one of those personalities were created as an entity to protect them from the trauma that they went into their mind split and so they have these distinct different type of personalities that could be male could be female um 
that have different languages they actually speak a different languages they have accents um you know they have a whole different persona they dress very differently but each one of them helps to function within society and they're not cognitive a lot of times they're not cognitive that the other personality is operating um and so i always explain to you guys you know you can think of dissociation when you're like driving uh down the highway if you're driving and you're trying to get to a place but you can't recall the trip that's my form of dissociation where you really don't remember or recall driving you know you did but you can't recall the trip because your mind was on something your mind was dissociated and thinking about something else that's a mild form of dissociation that we do so imagine that um on a more intense scale where they literally cannot recall how they ended up from here to alabama or if they ended up from here and there's a days in between there where they've ended up in a whole nother city and can't recall how they got there or if they were driving and ended up somewhere totally lost and they have no clue how they got to where they were going so these are different forms of dissociation well some narcissists have that as well now i'm not talking about the ones that they you know a narcissist normally per purposely changes to mirror new supply so a lot of times when you're getting this narcissist this narcissist is transforming into the new supply what you get when you say well no i did see you know the compassion and this is a totally different person because i've seen no you're probably seeing pieces of parts of other people's personality that they have collected and put into their entourage or their repertoire of different personalities and, and masks that they have to put on right so for each person you got a businessman in his 50 that wears suits and is a ceo of a company and then you see him in the evening and he's with prostitutes and he's sagging and he's wearing a cap backwards remember i said that then the next time you see them all of a sudden they're a part of an organization where um i don't know an organization a secret organization or whatever organization and they dressed apart for that organization then they meet maybe a younger uh source of supply a possible source of supply and then they dress according to that you they may meet a doc they may meet a doctor and so all of a sudden they start addressing according to that you know and they and they switch but they do it purposely they don't not think about it you know when you're dealing with dissociative disorder they don't think about the switch the switch happens uh, when they're under extreme levels of stress and the other one the other personality comes out to protect them well narcissist does it on purpose to mimic and mirror people and this is how they gain some source I mean a fuel they do not operate you know we can speak to somebody if you don't speak to me girl I'll be good you know think about it or dude I'll be good you know pound fish pound you know but a narcissist has to what is called ego fuel ego fuel they have to have fuel all day long if you don't give them fuel they you'll see them just lose it i've seen them lose it um so let me go to this i'm gonna go real quickly um go to uh the minds journal um and this is miss andrea schneider she's a uh, uh, she has a master in social work she's a licensed clinical social worker and um her topic is narcissist supply how you provide necessary ignition for narcissistic fuel so let me go down and it says here survivors read about narcissistic supply or ego fuel it fuels their ego narcissists require from their relationship to maintain their precariously fragile psychological innards what they present to you is not what they are they present them being very strong being very confident very knowledgeable that's why i tell you guys you got to be careful who you get information from you know some of you guys are telling me that you've done phone consults with um hg tutor and a lot of times you guys got information from him he's a narcissist what are you guys doing i mean he gives good information don't get me wrong he tells you exactly how they think and how they respond but he's a he's talking about himself y'all he's talking about himself He's no different than any other narcissist. He's a greater narcissist. He knows exactly how to do it and you are feeding into his, and he tells you, no, I don't get a lot of fuel. Yes, he does. He gets copious amounts of fuel and you guys play into it and then you seek him for, um, for advice. He's hiding behind an image and you guys are getting, he's getting copious amounts of fuel and then he's advising you guys. He is under psychiatric care, y'all. He is under psychiatric care. He's writing this because he was told to do this. And some of you guys, he has some type of legal situation going, but he is under psychiatric care and he's giving you guys advice. Come on, you guys work with me. Don't get me wrong. Read his stuff and get to know his stuff because he's telling you how they think. But he's under psychiatric care, y'all. And you guys are calling him for phone consoles. 
Okay, come on, y'all. Work with me. I'm trying to teach you guys. Come on, come on. You know, this doesn't just apply to your personal relationship. This is how you guys pick up on other on other narcissists. And why would you connect with them? You're trying to get rid of them. You're trying to demagnetize yourself from a narcissist. And you're giving them fuel. You're giving them what they're asking for. And it's very innocent. Well, you know, he's not going to. He's not going to. You're still dealing with a narcissist, you guys. Boy, I just want to just. Rah. Come on, you guys. I'm working with you guys. <clears throat> Come on, you guys. I'm, 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 that's all I can say. Come on. I'm working with you guys. I'm trying to help you guys get narc free. You got to be wise. You got to be wise. Read his stuff. He's telling you how they think. But you don't forget that he is a narcissist. Who is he talking about? He's talking about himself. Come on, you guys. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, let's look. So, um, let's look. Um... Part of the healing process for for survivors of this form of psychological abuse is understanding that their narcissistic abuser actually did not feel empathy toward the survivor's pain and suffering. They don't. To them, that's fuel. The more you hurt, the more you cry. They're they're sadistic, just like she said. You know, the more you hurt, the more tears you shed, the more you beg, the more you tell them I don't understand, the more you want closure, the more you look at them like, what about your children? You know, how can you not feel? To them, that is fuel. It fuels them to make them feel empowered. Um, so in the sadistic extraction of narcissistic supply as a result of causing emotional pain to the survivor that generates the most ego fuel for the abuser. The, an extreme narcissist feels powerful and in control when they can simultaneously bolster up their love object on a pedestal and then uh, sub sub subsequently wallop them off with abusive words for the extreme narcissist the love relationship is not about love it is about acquiring and extracting prime grade narcissistic supply or ego fuel even at the expense of their love objects well-being they could care less about your well-being they're concerned about their well-being and the fuel that they can get from you an extreme narcissist relationship exists exists for that reason alone they're not in it with you because they care. And those primary sources of supply, those of you that have been in a relationship for 40 years, you have supplied the utmost amount of supply for them. You have provided copious amounts of supply. And that's why a lot of you coming out of these relationships say that you are mentally drained, you are emotionally drained, you don't know what to think anymore, you don't know how to act, you don't even know if you're real. You know, because they have totally drained you and abused you. And because they can't, that's like, remember we talk about squeezing blood out of a turnip? You can't squeeze blood out of a turnip. They have squuzz all the blood they can get out of a turnip. Turnip. You know, you can only squeeze a towel so much to get that water out of there. And eventually it evaporates. There is no more water in that rag. And that's what they've done with you guys. Uh, let's see. Us. Us. That's what they have done with us. Let me put me back in there. That's what they have done with us. That's why a lot of times when you get back on your feet and you refill yourself and you feel more empowered and you feel good, you have just you have just filled up your that's like going to a gas station where the pumps are empty and then you see the gas truck come and it puts uh, gas back into the ground. Now you are completely full of this new, I mean, this new fuel. You're feeling good. You're radiating. You're making books. You're making videos, all that. That is a whole nother level of supply for them. And they're looking at you like Hannibal Lecter. Clarice, you know, and they're looking at you because they're, they're, oh, she got fuel and I'm going back. And it's easy to go back and hoover the primary source that they discarded because you were a good source of supply. You provided them with copious amounts of supply, fuel, uh, uh, copious amounts of fuel. So they're coming back to make sure or to see whether you will still fall for their charm so they can get supply. But once they drain you, it's the same cycle. They do the exact same thing again. So let's look. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Whether in love, work, family, relationship, it is uh, it is the reaction of caring individuals. You guys are the caring individuals that fills the psychic void of the extreme narcissist parasite. They're parasite, y'all, um, because the abuser lacks those very qualities and is, in essence, seeking to absorb the equis the ex exquisite. There we go. Ex exquisite exquisite emotional fuel from their host those abusers who tend toward malignant end of the scale of npd okay so those abusers who tend toward the malignant end of the scale of npd and remember malignant means they also have the diagnosis of uh, sociopath 
or anti-personality disorder. That's what it's called now, anti-personality, anti-social personality disorder. That's malignant. Uh, that's what the malignant is. Deliberately seeking to cause harm in a sadistic fashion so as to extract the narcissistic supply of their love objects, subordinates, and family members, and your children. They actually take pleasure in emotionally abusing a supply source after a period of seduction, infatuation, and love, love bombing. That's what that whole thing is. Those abusers who are more garden variety narcissists may not operate consciously to cause intentional harm, but nothing, nonetheless, if emotional reaction fuel is available, the, then it will take. They will be taken and lapped up eagerly should the opportunity present itself. They know what they're doing. Uh, the lower narcissist, the lower grade narcissist, um, loves the reaction and the response, the fuel that they get. You know, they're doing stuff and they're doing stuff is like a, uh, like my my mentor always says, is like a baby. Um, cobra you know when the baby snakes are first you know when they're little they don't know how to control their biting so when they bite they keep biting they keep biting they and all that venom is coming out of them they don't know when to stop biting a more mature cobra bites holds on pumps that venom and then lets go they're gonna let go but they've already pumped the venom in you they're not gonna keep pumping it because they'll mess around and kill their own self well that is exactly how a narcissist is uh, when they're young and they're low grade narcissists, they keep biting, keep biting, keep biting, but they love the reaction. They love that fuel and the reaction that they're getting from you. And, and you're going crazy. They're going crazy. It's like a, a narc fest in the, in the water. Shark fest, narc fest. That was funny. But, um, you know, a narc fest. And so they like that, but they don't, they have not, they have not mastered, uh, you know, precise hits. They haven't they haven't zoned in and and they realize that oh wait a minute the usually the mid grades usually know well oh when I do this I get this fuel so I need to master this a greater narcissist knows exactly how to do it knows how exactly how to get it from you too um, so they know what they're doing it's just that they haven't perfected the skill and the lower narcissist usually does it and they like the reaction so they're very uh, what's the word I'm looking for um, not obsessive. Uh, but most of them are they're reactive and they are um, they don't think before they do anything. They just they just do it, you know, uh, and then they hate the reaction. Sometimes they hate the reaction that they get, but they just do it. Uh, let's look. Uh, so I think that's about it. So hopefully I explain few, you know, from a different perspective. Once again, you are a source of supply that provides fuel no contact shuts off their fuel is like shutting off the fuel valve at a gas station so that nothing is pumping through that but it gives you distance between that narcissist so that you can clear that fog from your head and start thinking normally because a lot of you that said that have had the fog lifted now you look back and now you got the right glasses on like some of you guys said i got the right prescription on and now you look back and that's why a lot of times i throw jokes out there you know just to make you smile number one but number two um you know now you look back and some of the things that they were doing you're almost appalled like i can't believe i fell for that or oh my gosh this person is like the dumbest smart person i've ever met or like this is the ugliest handsome person or ugliest pretty person i've ever met you know and some of you are now the fog is lifting and that's that no contact that clears your mind so that you can think clearly you were a source of supply for them to get fuel everyone is fuel they even go to the to the extent of uh threatening suicide passing out uh, uh, jumping in front of a car because they know you're going to save them. Uh, going to the hospital, constantly going to the hospital um, and threatening suicide or something is wrong. Hypochondriacs, you know, but they want, they need fuel. They need fuel. Whatever way they can do it, all of a sudden you see their whole demeanor change again. And then they're calm again. And you're like, what in the world? Or for those that have been in situations in which the police will call to your house and you know, you're all over the place. Now, first they were all over the place. When the police come, they've got a reaction from you now you're all over the place and the police are telling you to calm down but then and all of a sudden you see them calm down and they're looking at you um and and they're looking at you because they're calm and they got the feel that they wanted and you're looking like but that's the problem that's the problem you're all over the place you've reacted so hopefully this video has helped a little bit to give you some idea about fuel 
Uh, hopefully this has answered some questions that you guys were emailing me. I thank you guys so much for your love and your support. Thank you guys for encouraging me and sending me questions. I love it. I love interacting with you guys. I love providing you with information. And I love when you guys email me and tell me how you're growing and you're learning. You guys were made to be great. And then my new friend on here, Miss Tammy, told me to stop saying, um, as my friend always says, she said, I can own the term now. So now I'm going to say, go be great. But that doesn't sound, seems like I need to add some more stuff to it. But okay, Miss Tammy, I'm going to take your advice. So what I want you guys to do is, if you have not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I am Dr. Carmen Bryant, Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Hit the bell because I uh, pre-record and then I upload Tuesday through Friday. And I come on live on Sundays between 8 and 9 Pacific Standard Time. Um, I'm on the West Coast. Um, this Sunday, I will be traveling. I will post a video for you guys, but I will be traveling. So there's a possibility I might not be able to come on live, but I will post a video for you guys. I will talk to you guys or in between uh, the transition when I get on the road, if there's time for me to come on live for a few minutes, I will. I may not be able to answer um, questions, uh, but whatever I do, I will post something on Sunday. You stay tuned, but I am traveling on Sunday. Um, so you guys stay tuned. Okay. So I will be on the road. I'm traveling on Sunday. Um, and those of you, um, you have not ordered my book yet, please go to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, or, um, is it, uh, hold on, I got to remember the book company. It is, um, westbowpress.com westbowpress.com barnes and noble and amazon amazon and they are on uh ebook now so you can get them on kindle you can get them on ebook um i have not done audio uh if i do audio you know you're going to hear my voice i'm gonna have a you know i'm gonna have my voice on there if it's my voice you want to hear uh, sometimes they do recording by other people uh but if they do audio i'll ask them if i can do the audio um i have not gotten to that point yet and it has not been um translated in other languages so i apologize i know some of you guys were asking um but please go order my book the book is called unmasking the illusion of perfection Unmasking the Illusion of Perfection it is a white and blue book. You'll see a man standing in front of it with a mask in his face. Um, and then for those of you on my uh, Facebook page, I got I told you guys that I was having problems uploading videos. And so some of you guys said that you can't find the new um, uh, Facebook page that I created. Uh, the new Facebook page is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Overcoming narcissist abuse it's got the regular picture that i have and it's got my book cover on the header it's got the book cover and the back of the book on there but it's overcoming narcissist abuse i'll try sometimes i can upload the videos from the computer um, i'll try and see what i can do if not go over to the new youtube uh, channel it is overcoming narcissist supply uh, narcissist supply oh i think it's supply uh overcoming narcissist abuse uh and you'll see my picture the picture that i have on my book and everything else let me guys um let me guys let you guys know I need to get off the camera because I got some clients coming. But let me know. Some of you guys have been reading a book. Give me some comments. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know how this video has helped. Make sure you hear, hit the bell so you can hear whenever I upload. And make sure you hit the like button on uh, my Facebook page. One page is Psychological Health Consultants and Services, my professional. And then I have my public, um, my public page, which is Overcoming Narcissist Abuse. Let me know if you guys can find it, okay? Thank you guys once again for being here. Thank you for all your support. Thank you guys so much. Now, what I want you to do is... Go and be great.